So welcome to Tips from Ron from Talonix. Uh, today we're looking at the Viavi DSP TDR. Uh, we're just going to be going over the meter today just to highlight a few uh, things that make it a little bit easier uh, user friendly uh, for when you're using the DSP TDR. Um, so DSP TDR will find any fault water on the line, uh, all the small little faults that you need when you're looking uh, at all your different cables. Um, I'm assuming that there's some knowledge on how to use the machine, uh, use the TDR. I'm not going to go into in depth on every single function here, um, but just want to highlight some, a couple of things to make your life a little bit easier when you're using the TDR. So, when you first turn on your meter, you always come into your login screen. As you can see, there's five different user profiles that you could technically have set up. So what I've done is I've set them up so that you can log into these right away as if it's an RG11 drop, RG6 drop, or a 500 cable, and you have two more empty ones here, so you can set these up however you want. So basically what it does is it helps to have all the presets ready to go so you're not constantly changing, especially if you're changing from an RG6 or to an RG11 to 500 cable. You've already got all your presets in there. It just makes your life a little bit easier. So in this case here, we are... Uh, Got a white cable here, that's our temporary cable, RG6. And here's the black drop that we're gonna be TDRing. And we're gonna go right into our RG6. And we're gonna select RG, uh, we're right into the profile. We're gonna go to TDR, because we wanna TDR the cable. And we're just gonna hit done there. So what happens is, when you first get into your screen, you've got everything basically set up. So we're gonna do a live trace, our average is 15. Um, you can leave that at 15, 20, whatever you want. It's just basically averaging uh, as it continuously shoots the cable. It just averages over at a number of traces. I find 15 to 20 is just fine. There's, there's no issues with that. Um, so as you go through, there's your live trace. You can change that to single or live. We're going to put it on live. But here, we're going to have a read distance at 60 meters, uh, which for an RG6 drop, we shouldn't really be going over 60 meters. So now it's preset, so we don't have to adjust that at all. Our VOP is set for 83%. Again, so now we don't have to adjust our VOP as we change between cables. 83% uh, is the general uh, VOP that you would use for an RG6 drop. Then when we click on reference, we can change our reference no problem as well. We can zoom in and out. And then we have our start and our stop. Now in this case, it's set for 64 and zero. So with it all set up and ready to go, basically all we have to do is hit start. And you can see right away it's found a fault right there. And to check the exactly how far that is, we're gonna hit events list. And right there it says at 20.1 meters it is our fault. The other thing you'll notice here is a DBRL reading, uh, decibel return loss. So the closer to zero that number is, the bigger your fault. So here we have a nine dB DBRL. So that means we've got a fairly large fault. Uh, if it's at like 30 or 40, it's actually a smaller fault. So just keep that in mind when you're reading the, the DBRL. So having the profile all set up, you can see it's just a couple of button pushes and we're, we're right where we need to be. So you can back out. There's our fault. You can see my markers uh, already been set to it because I, but the, the quickest way would be to go to, like we said, just did was to go to your events list. But if I want to change my marker at all, I can just arrow on through my selection and I can hit enter, and let's say I want to put my marker at 30, I can just click on 30 and hit done. And you can see my marker has moved over here as well. So we can just move my markers around. And then lastly, the distance between my two markers are right there as well. So um, we're at 30 meters distance. And you can see this is event number one. So it will mark your events for you depending on uh, where, how many faults you have. If you got a couple of faults on the cable, you'll see a one and a two and a three. All right, so nice and easy actually. Um, when you're setting up your meter, if you wanna now go to a 500 cable, instead of changing all your settings, you're just gonna back out of there. You're gonna click on your function. You're gonna log off user. And of course you're gonna hit okay. Now I'm back to my login screen. Now I wanna do a 500 cable, TDR, enter. And you can see average is at 20. I'm gonna do a live trace, but my read distance now is at 250 meters. And again, you can adjust this to whatever you want, but you can see it's a lot longer because 500 cables obviously are a lot longer than your drops. Your VOP now is at 87%, so I don't have to adjust this at all. It's already preset into the meter. 
and same thing we're gonna hit start and in this case we're on a drop so our fault should show up just like it did on the last one we're gonna hit events list and there's our event and of course our distance now is about an extra meter because our uh, VOP was slightly different slightly different and you'll see this DBRL reading change slightly too as you TDR definitely won't always be exactly the same um, but as you can see with 87% our distance is 21.1 meters so again making sure you have your proper VOP is pretty important especially when you start digging for your cables you want to try to find them as close as you can to your fault so there's some tips and tricks for you I uh, hope that's going to make your life a little bit easier using the meter um, just have it all pre-set up ready to go and in some user profiles and all you need to do is go into your TDR and hit start and hit events list and you'll see all the events for where your faults are.